On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. I know what Eden Zanka and the Melbourne AFLW team have brought to the table this year, and that is some great form, back-to-back wins. And Eden Zanka has been kind enough to join us online here on Mornings on SEN. Eden, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. No worries. Thank you for having me. Yeah, expectations were high amongst everyone about Melbourne and their process this year in trying to win the flag in the AFLW. Uh, you haven't let anyone down. It's been a good start. Yeah, the boys have set the bar pretty high for us this year. Um, we still <laughs> got to try and follow in their footsteps. But, um, yeah, we're, the team's got a lot of confidence at the moment. And, um, yeah, we've got our tails pretty high. And we've obviously won our past two games. And, um, yeah, following on from that, we've, we haven't even really um, fully uh, complimented our game style yet. So we've got so much to improve on. And, yeah, that excites us so much. And... Assuming, yeah, we're all we're all just playing our role, and uh, do that, then yeah, we're, we've got an exciting uh, couple of months ahead. Yeah, one of the four unbeaten teams in the competition so far, along with Fremantle, Adelaide, Collingwood, and yourselves, unbeaten after two games. What has been the best part about what you've achieved so far in those opening wins? I guess, uh, I, honestly, I suppose just having the opportunity to play, like. I guess particularly, as you know, with, with everything that's happening in the world at the moment, it was pretty hit and miss um, whether or not we'd actually be running out on the field. So, um, yeah, I, I guess just having that opportunity to be able to run out with 29 sisters and, and competing against other teams and following off that, having having crowds and that as well, I, I, I guess that's been, yeah, probably the most exciting bit about this year. And then, yeah, obviously... Having the the pressure of being flag contenders, we've we've got something to to, to work towards, and yeah, the team teams lining up really well. So um, yeah, there's a there's a lot to be excited about. Eden Zanker, our guest from Melbourne's AFLW team, uh, we're chatting after their opening two wins. Now, when I was just doing a bit of research, I googled uh, as you do in Wikipedia, Natya. N A T Y A in Victoria. Uh, Natya, they lost yeah. your post office in 1973. How do you post a letter in Natya and where is it? Uh, surely, would you just chuck a letter in the pigeons, in the pigeon talent and send it three, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> nah, where, um, where is Natya and who else, who else famous comes from Natya? <laughs> um, Natya, it's probably 45 minutes, uh, Mildura side of Swan Hill. Or Anyone know where any of those two places are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But um, <laughs> oh, my my dad would probably have bragging rights about him being a famous footballer back in the day. But um, he pulled too many hammies to, to play too well, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I've got him covered. Uh, yeah, about 400 k's out of Melbourne is Natcha. Uh, how did you find yourself? I mean, playing for Melbourne. Just go back to that story, Eden. How did you, how did you end up being on their list? And and what was the dream when you were growing up? Which team were you? Did you barrack for as a foot as a footy fan prior to, to pulling on the boots for the D's? Yeah, oh, I, 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 it's pretty hereditary, but a lot of our family sort of went for St Kilda, so that sort of rubbed off on me a fair bit. But um, yeah, I guess in terms of my football career and where I started, I, it was. 2017, where um, I started to play some under-18 footy, and um, yeah, previous previously to that, I played um, three years of, of netball, and then I actually played a year of under-12 um, youth footy back at for the Tullamanane Saints. Um, so yeah, I guess from there, progressing on from that after the three years of, of netball, I. Um, yeah, started to get my hands on the footy a bit more and played for a, a little sort of town youth girls called Warrenee. Um Yeah, we went through that, yeah, pretty pretty strong side. We won the granny and then, yeah, from there you had your TAC Cup and, um, yeah, I, I guess footy wasn't too established back then so we didn't really have the opportunity to play too many games. But, yeah, from there, TAC Cup and then, yeah, got selected in an all all Australian side and um, yeah played on the uh, played on Eddie had a couple of times and yeah that's I guess obviously where Todd Patterson and Mick Finney 
um, decided to travel all the way down to Natchez for a, probably a 30 minute interview and drive back home. So it's a, probably about a 10 hour drive round trip for him and that's pretty keen to have me on board. And yeah, I had to throw away the St. Kilda uh, jerseys and uh, swap it for a, for a deep one. Yeah, well, you've done so well. And interesting enough, that's your next contest. You play St Kilda at Casey Fields, of course, on Saturday. So a bit of, uh, well, you've got the, you probably don't have any St Kilda blood running through you at the moment, but uh, I'm sure the family will have to let go. Uh, and look, they're, they're developing. They've got a bit to go and they've been hit hard for various reasons with their playing stocks. So you would in, go into the game with great confidence. And, and you must get great confidence also playing with one of the icons of, of AFLW in Daisy Pierce. What does she bring to the table for you, Eden, in regards to knowing about the game, learning about the game, and her leadership and mentorship? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I suppose touching on what, you did, what we first sort of chatted about, round three, like it's our first home game against the Sainers. We're happy to finally have a home game and be in front of a home crowd and, um, yeah, obviously Pride Round and um, all that. So it's going to be super exciting for us. But, uh, yeah, so she's, she's amazing, an amazing female athlete to play alongside her. her um, you probably know it yourself, just her footy IQ and yeah. her knowledge around the game is just phenomenal. And to have that in our side when we're out there playing, so it's just, I don't think anything can really come, like, compare to that. Um, we don't we don't have to wait till quarter time or half time for the coaches to speak to us. We can just she can spread the word through the lines and we can um yeah, we can adjust to that and yeah, she's playing such good footy at the moment, playing her role, going being a spare down back when we need her and playing magnificently in the forward, creating opportunities for us. So yeah, playing playing alongside stays, it's just something that I will love and have for the rest of my life. Eden Zanker, our guest from the Melbourne AFLW team. They take on St Kilda at Casey Fields, uh, of course, on Saturday against the Mighty Saints. Get down and support both the teams. You talked about the men's team and, you know, the bar being raised by their premiership success. How much interaction? I always ask this of our AFLW and our men's team. How much crossover do you have? I know COVID probably changes a little bit of the dynamics and how much you have with each other, but how much input are you getting from, from the men's program and, and how much do, you know, does uh, a Clayton Oliver or a, a Max Gorn bring to the table in regards to the girls program yeah we've actually been really fortunate enough even under this sort of COVID protocols to have Ben Brown and Adam Tomlinson uh, come down to a lot of our Thursday night trainings and um, yeah provide a lot of information and uh, help us out but yeah it's, it's great to have I guess the guys there and yeah that interaction with the men's team because nothing really beats it it just comes to show um, how invested they are not just within their own team, but within the whole club. They're such great club people, all the guys, and um, we love having them down at training. So, um, yeah, it's been really good to have interaction with them, even under the circumstances of COVID. Pride round jumper this weekend? Yes, pride round jumper this weekend. was uh, uh, retired D, Stephen Cunningham, actually designed, designed the jumper, and, yeah, she's done a terrific job, but... I think it symbolises a lot for what we're achieving and how far we've come um, with this whole process. So, um, yeah, we're, we're super excited to pull it on this weekend. And, um, yeah, we're just embracing everyone and welcoming people to our club and our game. And, yeah, it's going to be super exciting for us. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, all teams, bar West Coast Eagles, who have uh, copped a bit of a backlash for not having a jumper in time. Uh, on the temper text machine, we get a lot of texts uh, coming in, Eden. A couple of people yeah. texting in. Great to hear from the girl from Manangatang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Manang's not too far. That's sort of where, yeah, Dad and uh, his family grew up. But, yeah, I've got a lot of friends up there and Now, interesting, someone else texted, uh, the surname Zanka is not, uh, you know, obviously uh, a popular surname. Are you any relation, distant or otherwise, to the former female jockey called Tamara Zanka? I haven't been on Ancestry.com, but I'm, not, I'm actually not too sure. But it's probably worth having a look because there may perhaps be 
some sort of deep roots down there that I'm making myself, but... It'll be worth having a look at. Yeah, well, I'd imagine. I imagine there would be a link somewhere, sometime. Uh, sure. Last one for you, and we appreciate your time, Aiden. Just in regards yep. to the competition, um, are, you, are you are you seeing for someone who's been in the system? And you talked about your process in getting in onto an AFLW list and in underage teams and Tat Cup and the, and the like of that. Are you seeing? how better the competition is already two games into this season. I talk of skill, I talk of fitness, I talk of body shape, I talk of game plan. Even though you're on a winning team and you're in a power club, are you seeing across the competition another rise in percentage of all those aspects? Yeah, absolutely. And you just hear it from people that are actually watching and and come to you the next day and seriously just say, like, gee, that's... That was some good footy, and mm. and gee, that was enjoyable to watch. And the ball movement was so good. So, like, and you could, and we we experienced it on uh, last week against the Tides. Like, I think they only got their one win last year for the season, and they come out firing and were such a competitive team last week. And it just comes to show the growth that. Or how far we've come and the growth in the actual competition. So, it's yeah, it's amazing to just to be able to watch other teams play as well and see how far they've come. And credit to the coaches and yeah, I guess the girls themselves for putting in the time and effort. And yeah, I guess touching on that last little point, the more footy that we can get under our belts, the better it's going to get. It's going to take some time, but yeah, all in all, it's it's yeah, starting to um, yeah, challenge us a lot more. And um, but that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I say this in the nicest possible way. I think the novelty value of the AFLW has worn off, and I think that's good. I think the, yeah. the novelty value of, you know, other, other sports uh, – and look, you all come from other sporting backgrounds. We, we've all been there, and you talked about your netball, and you're a very good netballer through the country netball system as well. But I talk of, of – of, I think we're now starting – starting. still a long way to go, but we're starting to watch the AFLW – purely because it is actually the skill level and the, and the talent and the match plans are, are, are very much almost watchable now rather than the novelty of it that we had for a couple of years and years ago. Yeah, 100%. And, yeah, I guess, yeah, touching on, yeah, ball movement and plans and stuff, I, I guess people can just relate to that. Like when, like we, when we want to play, when we want to play an aggressive forward half sort of footy. So we're looking to use like that inside corridor and make the, make the game exciting and take it on a bit. So, um, yeah, 100, 100% agree with what you're saying. And, yeah, like I said, it'll just take time, but we're, we're moving very quickly. Uh, did Mickey Stania show the vision or did you girls watch the vision? I, I, I crossed past the TV and I saw a, a handball exchange in tight. I reckon it was six or seven handballs by the Demons. I think it was last week's game. It was absolute beautiful football movement through the middle. It was quick hands in the right direction. No one was standing still. It was quality to watch. Yeah, absolutely. He, hasn't, yeah, he doesn't like to touch on too many things, so it doesn't make our heads big, but um, <laughs> yeah, we, we do go through a fair bit of vision, and I guess that's another thing that's helping us improve and uh, continue to grow the game is, yeah, going back on things, seeing what we can do better, and whatever else. But, oh, Mickey, he doesn't like to yeah, fill our heads too much. We like to just watch some things that we can improve on, and then uh, look forward to the next week ahead. Appreciate your time. Congratulations, first and foremost, on your form so far in the opening two games. You were in the AFL Team of the Week in Round 1 as well. Good luck on the weekend against uh, St Kilda at Casey Fields. It is your first home game. Should be an absolute beauty, and it is Pride Round as well for the AFLW. Thanks for joining us, Eden, and uh, we'll get on to ancestry.com.au and see if you are related (laughs) to former jockey Tamara Zanka.